Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Um, nice day out there in the water, it looks like. All the look downs, uh, grumpy old men, I like to call them, uh, look uh, grumpy today. So <laughs> it's status quo day, but not so much in precious metals markets. Let's take a look and see what we're talking about. CPI print comes out today, but is anybody really surprised? No, but why? gosh, they just act surprised, except for uh, corporate media is not too happy about it, and we'll get into that, and we'll look at prices right now. What's going on today? Uh, market's up a little bit. I, mean, I kind of expected it somewhat. However, you know, we cannot forget to, you know, you cannot forget is that the, the CPI print and these things don't themselves directly impact the precious metals. It's the traders that do. And, uh, you know, people like yourselves and people like me, but we're small time traders. We're the, uh, we're the uh, bait fish. We're the schooling fish, which I actually don't see out here today. Usually there's a lot of schooling bait fish out here. Now, I won't say we're bait fish. That's a bad term to use. I'm sorry. But we're the masses. We're the masses out there. We're the schooling fish. We're the grumpy old men. So, And uh, uh, then you've got your other traders. You've got your whales out there. And who are your whales in the uh, gold and silver markets? Well, uh, your whales and your gold markets are typically going to be uh, uh, central banks and uh, BIS, and uh, uh, those are the manipulative whales, I believe. And uh, when it comes to silver, it's your managed money uh, and your commercial banks, so your managed money uh, managers or, or uh, professionals uh, that deal with other people's money. And uh, uh, they look at charts, they look at flows. So it would matter to the managed money people, the CPEI print, uh, mostly because, again, I think they're mostly technical traders, the, the managed money crowd. Uh, commercial bankers, uh, uh, they just control markets entirely. Uh, you know, they're, they're in control of the silver market primarily. So when it comes to silver, uh, those are your two big whales, managed money and commercial, uh, commercial banks. And uh, uh, what we've seen over the years is uh, commercial banks, uh, uh, JPM would be considered a commercial bank, is out, pretty much out of the uh, um, uh, silver manipulate. Not, not, I shouldn't say that, out of their short position. So you've got, uh, from what Ted Butler says, four to eight short positions out there. Uh, JP's not one of them. The managed money, and, and again, the uh, commercial bankers use the uh, managed money people, and they use uh, small traders, and they uh, uh, that's how they uh, make their money by shorting these markets, and and uh, they manipulate them, fully manipulate them. Managed money people are in there. They're just I don't want to call them stupid money, but again, they, they just kind of follow the charts. And those are the, the managed money is the one that would be doing the trading today based on the CPI. Those are the guys that would probably go more get into long positions as opposed to short positions. But uh, that's something we can talk about, and that gets pretty confusing. Uh, so one of the reasons I like Ted Butler, reading Ted Butler, is because he explains a lot of this stuff in a more simple terms. But uh, let's talk about what markets are doing this morning. A uh, little range here, 1759 to 1777 uh, uh, in gold being the high. Uh, it looks like you got a little smackdown. I think that was at the opening in New York. Uh, but, you know, of course it would open at that level. Uh, gold, it's not a 24-hour market. Gold, uh, 1770 currently. Uh, silver, 2253. And again, almost, a, uh, what does it say, about a 23 cent range there. Uh, gosh, it's almost like a 50 cent range. Uh, and uh, a high of 2295, currently sitting at 2282. That's encouraging. And platinum has been holding its own at uh, that $1,000 plus market. Uh, funny, too, like I said, platinum has been in the green for the last couple of weeks and uh, uh, before gold and silver does. It's like it's almost telling us something here. Uh, but again, just a little pattern that probably really doesn't mean much at all uh, that I've noticed. And uh, let, again, look at that uh, range on gold. The 1759 is a low. Let's take a look at the uh, 24 hour gold chart right here and uh, uh, when was that 1759 low I'm just kind of curious what market that was uh, uh, here we are right here that was in yeah the opening in New York right here I doubt it was London but uh, uh, the opening in New York actually London's closed up the opening in New York right here and how do I know that I had to go out and look myself folks I'm not real familiar with GMT time most of us use our local time uh, so uh, an interesting little chart I got here is global markets to kind of show me when they all open versus GMT time. Uh, New York a gold market, not the electronic trading. When you see large trades done on this uh, uh, forum right here, you know you're being monkey hammered. But in the New York, well, you can get monkey hammered here as well. But uh, New York gold market uh, opens 8.20 a.m. Uh, our East Coast time and closes at 1.30. That's local time, East Coast, United States. And uh, uh, that would be the equivalent to 1320 GMT, okay? 
1830 GMT in the GMT time zone. And uh, London is going to be in that uh, uh, 8, that's their local time, 8 GMT and closes at 17 GMT. So they're uh, closed. Let's see, take a look here where they're closed. Uh, after, well, it appears that they're open through our entire market here in the London market. Now, I kind of didn't realize that. I thought they closed before us or something like that open before us because I really didn't follow the times. But uh, if you take a look here, uh, London Gold Market's opened uh, 8 GMT to 17 GMT, and uh, that puts them, well, actually, they open earlier than us because uh, we're open at 13, and then they close at uh, a little bit earlier than us as well. Uh, but that's like a nine-hour market, and if you take a look at here, it's a much, much shorter market in New York uh, going on. So uh, where did that, uh, let's take a look here, where did that uh, trade take place again? It looks like, as I said earlier, that uh, that down was in the New York opening market this morning. Uh, but quickly followed up, take a look at that, to that 1770 range. Uh, where is that overnight high, by the way? Oh, hold on. There, well, one second here. CC shows a spot, a high 1777.90 uh, overnight. That's kind of interesting in the world markets. Um, let's take a look over here. When did that 1777.90? Um, I just don't see it on this chart at all uh, overnight. So I'm not quite sure uh, what markets they're using on CCE here. Because, again, I don't see a high of 1777. Uh, 90. Maybe that's just a blip. Well, let's move into silver here. Uh, silver ranges uh, uh, 2253 to 2295. And again, I'm kind of curious on the chart. Uh, yeah, well, there it is. 2299 uh, would be the current. Whoa, okay. Uh, I guess we're there right now, more or less. We were. Hold on, let me take a look. Let me refresh this. That's probably the smart thing to do here. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if we're at that 23 mark at the moment. Yes, we are. So since I last refreshed the screen, that, that explains a little bit of this. Uh, we are broken that $23 market in silver. Hooray. <laughs> uh, let's see how long it stays up. But uh, uh, interesting that uh, the day we broken it, it broken the, uh, 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 the, the today's, you know, the $23 mark, today's high. Uh, this I don't think we broke This week we got near that $23 marker last week too, but uh, it looks like we're, we're pumping up in that $23 high. I can tell you that, in my opinion, that's probably more managed money and, you know, private money and managed money uh, uh, that made that move right there. If you're going to figure out which whales did it, tough to say though. Uh, I have to read Ted Butler's report this week. It ought to be real interesting. And uh, let's uh, take a look at, again, if you get a chance, this is kind of interesting. If you want to know what time markets are trading, uh, it's called Gold Markets Trading Time. Just type that in Google. Uh, I think it's, uh, I don't even know who does this, but uh, uh, pretty cool, and it's good to know. Uh, you just got to figure out the GMT times, where you're at, and where the other markets are at. Uh, but it kind of does give you an idea uh, of where and who slammed these particular markets and where they've gone up substantially. It looks like uh, New York right now is uh, New York NYMEX is uh, uh, where uh, gold is kind of sailing up and silver as well at the moment. Well, I didn't even update that chart. Either. Let's see. Oh, where'd we go? Okay, still sitting in that 1770. Looks like uh, silver's made a bigger move than gold so far, percentage-wise. Well, let's take a look at uh, an interesting article I seen in Seeking Alpha today, and uh, uh, this is by Adam Hamilton. I believe you can read this free on Seeking Alpha. They have a new section in commodities and gold. Uh, I subscribe to this site, and I recommend it. It's pretty cool as well. Uh, I want to get it more into the equity stuff and learn more about equities myself. I am no equities mar uh, expert, you know, as far as uh, uh, stocks and bonds and things. So I want to learn more about that. Great place to do it here. Uh, the summary here is gold will follow money supply. Gold will follow the money supply higher. And this is something we talk about all the time is that, you know, gold and silver are on a roller coaster to the moon. The ultimate, as long as we're on a fiat system, uh, and remember, gold and silver are priced in dollars as well. They're priced in fiat. So, um, you know, there's a, there's, that's, that's the correlation between the two. Uh, that's why, uh, what you're really seeing here. And it's kind of interesting. I'll take, we'll take a look at a, uh, uh, a little chart. Where is it? I'll just kind of pop over there right now. Take a look at this. Late price, late prices. This must be a restaurant somewhere. If you pay, uh, they got a perch sandwich. So <laughs> it's got to be up north somewhere. Uh, uh, if you pay in U.S. silver coins dated 1964 or earlier, 
Uh, this gentleman will sell you a hamburger for 12 cents in silver coins. Unfortunately, they didn't make it two cents silver, but uh, 10 hamburgers for a dollar in silver coins. Uh, uh, a silver dime will get you uh, some french fries from this gentleman. Uh, a perch sandwich is uh, 22 uh, silver dimes and cheese curds, whatever those are. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a northern food, Minnesota or something, who knows. Uh, I don't. Uh, 17 cents. So it's kind of pretty cool if you look at it. inflation, but that's a direct tie between the U.S. dollar, which gold and silver are priced in. This is what you're seeing. You're seeing the... Uh, 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 you're seeing these two divert from each other in such extreme angles, you know. You're seeing the value. Uh, follow my little cursor here. Uh, say this is a chart. You're seeing the value. This is fiat currency going down like this from this side of the screen down if you were to look at a chart. But it's like this. It's like this mostly. This is fiat currency if you were to look at it like a chart. Pardon my really crude use of my uh, uh, cursor here. And this is gold right here. At the same time, we got off the, uh, we went on to a fiat standard. This is gold and silver because, you know, silver will, will and does follow gold. And also, I believe silver has some dynamics. Gold doesn't, uh, including rarity, I believe. I don't think there's much silver out there above ground as they say there is. Uh, so you've got dollar going down. You've got silver going up. Uh, we talk about that, uh, I mean, dollar going down. Uh, and silver and gold going up. Uh, yet, despite the Fed implying distant future rate hikes and slowing QE money printing, its money spigots are still spewing vast delusions. Of it's because it's all lip service. It's all uh, jawboning. That's exactly what the Fed has been doing, you know. And and a large amount of the large people, uh, there's people out there that just believe what the Fed says. Well, you know, they can't lie to us. They don't. These are the same people that believe politicians and believe governments. Uh, so everything they say until they uh, until they find out it's a lie, then they say, well, uh, you know, and then they believe the next thing they tell them. So the Fed's been telling us for a long time that everything's okay, nothing to see here, move along. The fact is, is the ship's been sinking since 1913, um, since we went on to a uh, uh, went off the gold standard uh, and uh, even accelerated. I, I mean. Officially, we went off the gold standard with Nixon, but it started in 1913 with the creation of the Federal Reserve. So uh, since the, since Nixon, more or less, though, it's accelerated vastly since he completely took us off the gold standard. We're in a complete fiat currency. Uh, so uh, we've got a roller coaster to hell with uh, the buying power of the dollar and all other world currencies. Uh, again, that's the last horse, the glue factory. Uh, and we've got U.S. I mean, we've got gold and silver, which is the roller coaster to the moon. So these two are going in completely different directions in a choppy roller coaster-like path, uh, or you know, up and down, up and down. But the ultimate, um, the ultimate destination for gold and silver in a fiat-driven uh, world is the moon. Uh, the ultimate uh, destination for uh, uh, fiat currencies, ultimately in buying power, is to hell. Uh, again, that's my opinion. Uh, and opinion of a lot of other people. So, you know, the, the Fed's been telling us that they've uh, been, uh, 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 you know, they're, they're going to taper, they're going to uh, raise interest rates. Bullshit. BS, BS, BS. We all know it, okay? And, uh, I mean, at some point, the people that have been in denial for decades, you know, maybe some people will never get out of denial. Um, uh, so at some point, these people will get it, I, I think. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, and we'll take a look at Wall, look at Wall Street Journal, by the way. I'm just going to take a look at Wall Street Journal. There's no, nothing, pan, inflation remain high amid supply chain woes. Uh, you know, they're still repeating that narrative that this is temporary. It's just because of supply chain. No, it's not. Uh, Wall Street Journal completely uh, uh, doesn't say anything about the fact that the Fed has just been printing more money. They're never going to raise rates. Uh, these are the people in denial, but they're not really in denial. The Wall Street Journal is going to paint the narrative that the Fed wants them to paint. This is what Wall Street Journal does, their corporate mainstream narrative. Uh, so they're going to paint the government's view, and they're going to paint the view of the people that, you know, the people that pay their advertising. And, uh, you know, they're going to paint the paint the narrative of the market they report on. Okay, so uh, uh, they're they're still tying the CPI thing, which is ridiculous. They're 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 still tying the inflation rate to supply chain woes. Now, yes, this is true in a lot of products. Okay, uh, but tr trust me, they're completely taking out of the equation the amount of money and stimulus and the amount of uh, uh, money creation that the Fed has done and the amount of uh, uh, 
the stuff they've done in the background by, uh, uh, you know, QE and all. It's just insane, folks. I mean, that can't go without repercussions, and the repercussions are definitely inflation, without a doubt, making money cheaper. It's happened. We're going to see an accelerated form of that. And, uh, again, even if the supply chain, uh, not even if, the supply chain woes will, that, that'll fix itself over time. But prices aren't going to go down. They're just going to go up from here. And uh, it may not be as fast as we'll see it coming up in the next year or the last year and next year. Uh, and maybe the year after, maybe inflation will slow down a little bit, but it's not stopped. It's it's just going to continue. It's a, a roller coaster ride to hell uh, as far as buying power goes. And, uh, oh boy, where do I go from there, man? That's a, that's a long way. So let me get into it. Uh, I think you should read this article again. Type in gold will follow money supply. That should pop up. Adam Hamilton, Adam Hamilton did a good job on this. It is a long article. This is why I'm not reading it to you. I'm just going over the summary here. Uh, but very worthwhile reading. Uh, more monetary excess is still coming, even if QE4 taper happens. The gold bull has a long way to run before it reflects colossal central bank money printing globally. So uh, one of the things that yes and no. In, in a way, I think that gold should be much higher than it is right now. I think, uh, uh, Adam, I'm not sure if he's accounting for the manipulation in the gold markets that Gata talks about and that a lot of people talk about. Now, that again, it's different than the silver manipulation we see. The manipulation we see in the gold markets is by central banks, BIS, uh, and uh, uh, such entities, large, large banking whale entities, okay? That's who manipulates the price of gold. And if you read Gata, you'll know how. Again, totally different manipulators than what you see in the, in the silver market. That's managed money and commercial banks. Um, let me get a sip of coffee here real quick. There was something down here I wanted to read to you. And again, I don't want to make you dizzy here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. If not, I will, uh, uh, let's see here. I will uh, not make you watch me scroll down this whole page. And, uh, hmm. Let's see here. He talks about, and this is the good part of the article here. Gold got sucked into a pandemic lockdown stock panic. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Um, where we go? When uh, 2020, when the markets just kind of collapsed a little bit because of the uh, uh, closures and all the boneheaded moves that were made in 2020, uh, uh, and, and again, markets just kind of collapsed downward, gold got sucked into the pandemic lockdown stock panic too, plunging 12.1% in a slightly offset eight-day trading span. That surprised many traders, but it shouldn't have, and Adam's exactly right with this. When stock markets roll over into a super scary freefall, terrified people rush for the excess. They seek the relative safety of cash. Uh, and very good point, excellent point by him. So the U.S. dollar tends to soar as stock markets collapse. The benchmark U.S. dollar index blasted up 8.1% in that small time. Uh, right there, again, Adam makes a great point. We saw this happen in 2008 as well uh, with precious metals markets. Uh, people, you know, besides the fact that I think a lot of gold and silver is sold to cover margin calls, uh, the, the dollar index, I think, went up uh, dramatically. I think, I, I haven't looked. So uh, Adam goes on to point out here, such colossally huge moves for this reserve currency are only witnessed during stock panics. Uh, that I didn't know. Uh, big and fast dollar rallies hammer gold because hyper-leveraged gold future speculators who dominate gold's short-term price action watch the dollar for trading cues. Uh, the same phenomenon happened recently, but at a much slower pace back in early June. Uh, okay, uh, so that's really uh, interesting right there because this is, uh, uh, you know, he talks about that uh, you would expect uh, uh, in a situation like that uh, uh, when when the stock markets collapse and everything, that people would uh, that gold and silver would instantly go up. No, in 2008, uh, when the stock market collapsed and everything collapsed, gold collapsed, silver collapsed, did across the board. However, you couldn't buy real gold. You could, you know, in delivery times there was no silver to buy, no gold to buy. Uh, premiums were higher than they were in 2020, with with gold and silver being worth half as much. So it was a crazy time. Uh, however, the uh, paper price, the price you saw online or whatever, uh, um, had gone down dramatically. And again, uh, what happens is, you know, all those tr billions and trillions of dollars, a lot of that goes into the U.S. dollar, like a safety kind of mechanism. They flee to the dollar. Uh, and as uh, Adam pointed out, uh, in 2020, that just cr caused the dollar to blast up 8%. So that would make a difference in the price of uh, uh, precious metals. Uh, really good article here by Adam. Don't want to go too far in depth because, again, we'll be here all day. I recommend you read it, though. Uh, and 
Not too much to talk about in Zero Hedge. I saw the article up here by Sprott. Uh, Gold ignores real yields. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, uh, I don't think gold necessarily ignores real yields, but I think there's a lot of monkey hammering, as, again, GATA.org points out, that uh, uh, prevents gold from uh, uh, going up as much as it should. Uh, but again, the article here you might want to read, Morning Rundown, Gold Strong on CPI Day. Uh, kind of what we've been talking about here. And uh, other than that, uh, not too much here. And market sees 90% chance of right uh, bullshit. Rate hike by 2022. Long bond screen. Pop. <laughs> Come on. They've been talking about this rate hike forever. Now, if the, if the stock market really is truly going to take a giant crap here coming up, that seems to be the general consensus out there. Um, it, you know... <laughs> Are they going to really raise rates? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, again, they're just jawboning and BSing us. Uh, wow, that's pretty crazy there. And 70, hey, this doesn't help either. Look, 70 million in American retirees about to get their biggest. Uh, because of the uh, rise in CPI, uh, 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 what is it? Social Security checks are going to be uh, uh, quite a bit higher. And. Uh, you know, does it, the government doesn't have the money to pay for that? They they're in they're they're in a rock and a hard place, man. I don't see how they're going to exit from this without a bankruptcy or anything like that. There's some scary stuff out there. Uh, this is being one of the scariest things that I think uh, people, any working class, anybody that uh, everyone, uh, whether you're a lefty or a righty or whatever you call it, blue or red or whatever. Everybody is very concerned about this. Uh, the IRS $600 disclosure plan uh, that the Democrats had managed, and I don't know why they would do this. Uh, they ought to know that none of their, even their own constituency wouldn't agree with this. Uh, but uh, apparently, uh, uh, it says Republicans are sounding alarm over uh, a proposal tucked inside the Democrats' 2,500-page, 3.5 trillion Build Back Better Act that would expand the uh, internal Revenue Service and allow the agency to have access to any bank transaction of $600 or more. Folks, that is absolutely scary. This is what I've been talking about for the longest time. Is uh, They they want to know every dime you spend, where you spend it. Uh, I think that they even want to get to the point where they direct you where to spend it themselves or, or kind of force you to spend it in this area or whatever. This is where we're going with in a cashless society as well. But you know I've talked about that many times. That scares the crap out of me. But, uh, you know, if there's anything in that entire $3.5 trillion build back, I don't care if that bill is, is gets down whittled down to $1.5 trillion. If they add this uh, uh, expanding the uh, Internal Revenue Service and allowing the agency to have access to bank, bank transactions of $600 or more, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't even want to talk about it. It's just gotten so draconian. At some point, you know, I may even go gulp and just say, screw it, I'm done. You know, uh, give my employees a nice little bonus and say, hey, you're on your own, folks. Uh, I'm going to, you know, at some point, working class people, if they keep screwing us like this or keep trying, this hasn't gone through yet, so make sure you call your senator, your congressman, whether they're blue or red. Let them know that you, this is bullshit. You're not going to put up with this. Um, I call congressmen and senators all the time, so <laughs> do it politely. Don't be a jerk either. You know what I mean? You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. So uh, um, I definitely recommend uh, you guys start making phone calls. And again, be polite. Um but the, uh, this is just nonsense, complete nonsense, and I've talked about this many times, uh, and, and just frightens me. This is not the America I grew up in. No less, uh, let me not digress from gold and silver markets uh, and uh, move along. Hey, think about that, too. Every dime you spend on precious metals, they'll know about it once they pass that bill. They'll know about everything you spend, okay? Uh, that's just freaking frightening. Um, what if they don't want you to buy gold or silver anymore? Anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't see them. Is gold about is gold about to break out and how to trade it? And uh, uh, sorry about folks, I did not read this article, and it is in ZH. I just kind of saw it pop up. Uh, just type in is gold about to break and how to trade it. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I didn't read it yet either, and we don't have time for it today. Uh, Wall Street Journal again. Uh, I'm going to start looking at it. what's the market doing. Dow's down uh, down 200 points. Uh, S and P's kind of sideways, down 13. NASDAQ steadied out. Uh, nothing too crazy out there yet. And uh, GATA.org, again, not a lot to talk about. Uh, Craig Hemke at Sprott Comics ignores real uh, uh, real yields. 
And uh, I don't know if, again, I think a lot of metal is uh, uh, manipulated as well, you know, by large traders and stuff like that. So you really got to look and see what they're doing. And Butler Research, oh, can't read that to you, not going to read that to you, but if you're not uh, subscribed to Ted Butler uh, for the 32 bucks a month he gets, it is certainly worth it. Uh, he talks about a lot of good stuff and provides the data uh, to back it up. And uh, Wall Street Silver, uh, again, not too much to talk about out here. I thought that meme was really quick, and uh, if you're watching my videos and you're not subscribed to uh, Wall Street Silver, I recommend it. It's a uh, really cool, they got a lot of cool memes, a lot of, uh, uh, again, like-minded people that uh, all uh, like uh, investing in silver. Uh, so, worthwhile, and <laughs> that's pretty cool. Someone wrote buy silver in the back of that. Uh, I love the enthusiasm out here, that's for sure. Well, yesterday's video, Best Deals in Silver, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me just click on uh, that video here. Uh, I did alligators yesterday, and they, yeah, they are a little bit, not a lot of movement with alligators. Fish are certainly, let's see here, fish are certainly much more lively, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, look, that's a bunch of jacks. Huh, I think it's jacks. Well, uh, let's, uh, any questions from yesterday's video? Fish are great, thank you, tree climber. And <laughs> um, let's see here, I can find any questions I can answer about precious metals. Uh, good buying tips, sliding noises. Oh man, uh, pencil crossing out time. <laughs> no, I don't know, he's trying to figure out with all the little, he, I guess uh, Zero Zero wears uh, headphones so he can hear every little thing. You got some great headphones, man. I try to hear what you're talking about. Nope, can't do it. Um, I think that's really not too many questions out here. Uh, appreciate all the likes and the uh, subscribes you guys give me, and uh, I appreciate all your comments and you guys watching. Hope I'm giving you some success or successful. Hope I'm giving you some uh, helpful tips here in uh, your journey to uh, preserve your wealth. And uh, that's really about it for today. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Uh, call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. As you know, I'm a local dealer only. I don't deal online or through the mail. So if you live in South Florida or you're visiting me, you can buy from me just coming in between 10 and 4. Uh, I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion for the uh, 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 popular, well-known products, or not popular products, but the good products. Uh, so if you want to uh, get a great price and get a good deal and deal with someone local and you live in my area, come by and see me. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate it, and have yourself a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye now.